Hello and welcome to a special edition of The Global Eye. I'm Shireen Bhan. UK voters have turned in their verdict. The Labour Party is storming back to power after securing a landslide victory, winning over 400 seats. 61-year-old Keir Starmer is UK's next Prime Minister. The Labour Party's majority is the highest that we've seen in close to 200 years, bringing an end to 14 years of conservative rule, which has seen five Prime Ministers, including four in just the last five years. The Conservative Party has seen its worst poll drubbing, about a dozen cabinet ministers have lost their seat. Liz Truss becomes the first former prime minister in almost 19 years to lose her seat at a general election. Rishi Sunak stepping down as prime minister after his party's disastrous poll outing. He calls Starmer a decent public spirited man. Addressing a sea of red during his victory speech, Starmer reiterated his party's election tagline, change begins now. He's vowed national renewal and putting the country first and the party second. You campaigned for it, you fought for it, you voted for it, and now it has arrived. Change begins now. And it feels good, I have to be honest. Four and a half years of work changing the party. This is what it is for, a changed Labour Party ready to serve our country, ready to restore Britain to the service of working people. We had been expecting defeat for the Conservatives in this election, then expecting crushing defeat, then a Labour landslide. What we are witnessing is really a political bloodbath where the Conservatives stand decimated politically. Labour will form government now with an overwhelming majority with Sir Keir Starmer as the new Prime Minister of Britain. Rishi Sunak has conceded defeat. How could he not? And he's congratulated Labour on their massive win, congratulated Starmer. But Rishi Sunak is now done for. He will have to quit as leader of the Conservative Party. The Tories are very unforgiving of leaders who lead the party to defeat. And then a defeat such as this. Rishi Sunuk's high-flying political career really is over. He will at best now be a backbench opposition MP. A very large number of top conservatives have lost their seats, not forgetting the many who chose not to contest at all, seeing this coming. But over now to Starmer. Starmer has been an effective and innovative administrator with extensive experience in running institutions that Sunuk did not quite have. The biggest challenge, of course, will be to steady the economy, to improve the economy, get growth. It won't be easy. Growth has been elusive. He'll have to contain inflation, manage the tax burden. The ask is huge, but the British have decided that they will now rely on Starmer and his team for the job. Sanjay Suri reporting there from London, a Labour Prime Minister at 10 Downing Street after 14 years. What are the implications that it will have on Indo-UK ties? Joining me now, Richard Heald, Executive Chair of the UK-India Business Council. Navdeet Sarna, the former Indian Ambassador to the UK, also with us. And Nigel Fletcher, political historian at King's College London, joins us as well. And we'll shortly be joined by Rami Ranger. Uh, he will be with us on the programme. Uh, gentlemen, appreciate you joining us here on the programme. Nigel Fletcher to you. As Sanjay Suri was pointing out... Uh, defeat uh, uh, was what people had factored in but a landslide for Labour seemed to be what the exit polls predicted and it's gone exactly as per the script. Uh, what do you think Labour has done right or how much would you attribute anti-incumbency? 14 years of the Conservatives, how much would you attribute anti-incumbency for the kind of victory that we've seen for Keir Starmer and Labour? Well, I think that that is a significant part of it um, for two reasons, really. Um, if you look at the um, poll share that, um, that, that um, Starmer and Labour have achieved, the vote share that they've, uh, they've received, it's actually rather lower than some other leaders have, have, have got um, and achieve nothing like this sort of uh, outcome. Um, the thing that has given them this enormous landslide majority is that the Conservative vote share has completely collapse. They have lost votes um, to the Reform UK party on the one side, and they've lost votes um, to Labour and to the Liberal Democrats 
on the other side. Um, if you look at the the last comparable landslide defeat in 1997, the Conservatives in that election ended up on about 30 points. In this election, they're hovering around 20. I don't know what the, the final figure is, but they're significantly mm. down below that. So it is quite clear that it's, um, it's that um, Conservative um, collapse that has driven this extraordinary result on what's not actually a particularly large Labour share of the vote. Well, you know, you're right in pointing that out, uh, Nigel Fletcher. And in fact, I'm looking at data uh, that's been put together by Tom Calver uh, at the Sunday Times. And he says we have a Labour landslide, yet at the constituency level, seats are tighter than any point since 1945. So highlighting some of what we just heard there from you. But Richard Hilda, great to have you back on the Global Eye. Uh, let me start by asking you, what this means as far as the UK is concerned. You know, we heard Keir Starmer there saying that this is a vote for change, that it is not just a vote for change, but it's also Labour that has changed and will deliver on the change for the UK. We've seen a very detailed, uh, you know, turnaround plan, but also perhaps a, a realistic turnaround plan that Keir Starmer and team have put together as part of the manifesto. Steadying the UK economy, bringing growth back, keeping inflation in check. I mean, these are not easy easy task, Richard Heald. He takes on a pretty arduous road. Yes, the, um, absolutely, Shireen. Um, I think his inbox is going to be quite full, and it's not going to be um, actually that much different from the inbox that, uh, that Rishi Sunak had uh, in relation to the points that you mentioned. That having been said, we are starting to see uh, green shoots in the economy uh, here in the UK. Inflation is coming down and we're expecting interest rates to, to decline. So there are positives. Uh, he's, uh, you know, all politicians have to be lucky and it would appear that he's arriving on the scene here with this, this huge majority at a time when the economy is, is, moving, is moving in the right direction. That having been said, yes, his challenges are immense and he came out with a very ambitious uh, and ag aggressive manifesto. And the clear thing that he is looking for is management for growth. That is his, his thrust that he's been talking about. The key thing that we are waiting to see is how he intends to pay for these, how he intends to actually stimulate the economy in ways that he's described. Yes, and I'll get to that in just a second and uh, highlight some of the points mentioned in the manifesto that Keir Starmer and Labour will uh, take forward. But Navtej Sarna, let me bring you into the conversation. Appreciate you joining us. Uh, what we are seeing uh, across uh, the world today is... Uh, challenges for the incumbents we've seen it play out here in the uk we're seeing it play out in france and of course uh, over the weekend we will see how france votes in the second round of the elections as well uh, what do you pick up on uh, you know this this mood of anti-incumbency that seems to be weighing on the mind of voters globally Navtej Sarna. Well, thank you, Shireen. I, I think anti-incumbency is, is a major factor. I'm not sure you can draw parallels across across countries and the reasoning uh, in in each case, but certainly it plays uh, it plays into this. And here, I think anti-incumbency, as has been said by the previous speakers, has has been a major factor. It's not so much a sudden rise in labour popularity as as a complete collapse in confidence in the Conservatives and what they have done. Uh, over 14 years. Uh, I mean, these 14 years have been filled with uh, not just Brexit, uh, of, on which there's always been a divided uh, opinion, uh, but a handling of the pandemic, scandals through the pandemic, a very, very sluggish uh, economy, low growth, and, and some really, really strategic missteps, if I may call them that, uh, things like the Rwanda plan, etc., so I think in the public mm. eye, these have all added up uh, to a situation where given the fact that, you know, your public services are collapsing on top of all this, it's shown that nobody's nobody's yeah. in charge or nobody knows what's happening. So here, I think mm. it, probably the anti-incumbency factor has been the most obvious in the UK. Uh, in France, you see, you also have a more ideological divide. Uh, which which you are seeing uh, uh, play yeah. out. Uh, so you know, while many countries are voting to the 
uh, right, uh, the UK mm. has voted towards the left. That's right. Uh, well, that, that is right. The, the UK has voted to the left. And Navdeep Sarna, uh, you know, you make important points there about uh, some of the missteps that could have perhaps led to the conservative debacle. Rami Ranger also with us. Appreciate you joining us, uh, uh, Lord Ranger. You know, wanted to understand from you what you make of, uh, of Keir Starmer and the Labour's victory. But more importantly now, let's talk about the road ahead. The UK is also known to make its transition from the incumbent to the next government fairly swiftly. In fact, the economist is... Uh, uh, has said that uh, you, you get barely a few hours to move things out of 10 Downing Street, and we can already see Keir Starmer there at 10 Downing Street. So what would your expectations really be on government formation from here on? I think the Labour Party has changed a lot uh, since the last Labour Party was in government. They left a very big black hole. Many the economy is not very popular these days. People want something for nothing. You know, Rishi Shonak is a very intelligent gentleman. He brought the economy under control after Liz Truss, Liz Truss, former prime minister, crashed the economy with all these false promises, cutting taxes, borrowing money. So being a banker, he knows how important it is to keep the inflation low. So sometimes, you know, when you sacrifice, uh, you want to make sure the economy grows and you don't want to borrow a lot of money and you want to manage your social services, because social services, you know, people are living longer. Mm. National health is under immense pressure because the drugs are not cheap these days. So all this thing uh, makes the incumbent government very unpopular because they've been in power for 14 years. It's a record, and people think that the Labour Party yeah. will have a panacea, less change for the sake of changing. But again, it will be a very daunting task for Labour Party to manage the economy with the war in Ukraine, energy crisis, cost of living, living crisis, Brexit effects mm -hmm. of the Brexit. And then we had COVID. We are just recovering from COVID pandemic. And therefore, it is a very unfortunate sure. that Rishi Sunak was at this time uh, to take the uh, flag. But he managed the economy. Inflation is down. Interest rates are coming down. Unemployment is mm -hmm. very manageable. There's not much. Yeah. So he did a wonderful job in the 18 months he was prime minister. But again, mm -hmm. people want change for the sake of change. That you know, let's try Labour Party. What will they do? But I don't think they have a magic wand that they can, you know, suddenly turn the economy around because we are affected by the global uh, right. uh, situation. Sure. So that is the situation. No, absolutely, and I think I think Keir Starmer acknowledges that that uh, acknowledges that there is no silver bullet, no magic wand. In fact, let's listen in to Keir Starmer addressing the media outside 10 Downing Street. A better future. That we need to move forward together. Now, this wound, this lack of trust, can only be healed by actions, not words. I know that, but we can make a start today with the simple acknowledgement that public service is a privilege and that your government should treat every single person in this country with respect. If you voted Labour yesterday, we will carry the responsibility of your trust as we rebuild our country. But whether you voted Labour or not, in fact, especially if you did not, I say to you directly, my government will serve you. Politics can be a force for good. We will show that. We've changed the Labour Party, returned it to service, and that is how we will govern. Country first, party second. Yet, if I'm honest, service is merely a precondition of hope. And it is surely clear to everyone that our country needs a bigger reset, a rediscovery of who we are. Because no matter how fierce the storms of history, one of the great strengths of this nation has always been our ability to navigate a way to calmer waters. And yet this depends upon politicians, 
particularly those who stand for stability and moderation, as I do, recognizing when we must change course. For too long now, we've turned a blind eye as millions slid into greater insecurity. Nurses, builders, drivers, carers, people doing the right thing. Well, that is Keir Starmer. They're talking day. about a reset, acknowledging the fact that it's not going to be easy, but also promising, as the manifesto did, stability and moderation to ensure that the UK uh, steadies the ship and heads to calmer waters. Richard Heald, I want to come back to you now and talk about the economic reset that we perhaps could be looking at with Keir Starmer at the helm of affairs. You know, they've talked about building 1.5 new million homes they've talked about uh, uh, 24 billion pounds as far as the new green initiatives are concerned um, stable tax policy is what is being promised at this point in time no hike in income tax etc uh, you know what would it take to reset the economy Richard Hill what is industry looking forward to well I think you've summarized it quite well I mean there have been Keir Starmer and the Labour Party in their manifesto as I said have made a number of, of, of the very key pledges, uh, some of which are um, interesting in terms of stability, in terms of tax, um, and how much does it cost to move the economy forward? It costs an awful lot, and that is, I think, one of one of the key questions at this moment in time. What does business want? Business wants sustainability. They want continuity in terms of applications of regulations and taxation. They want to have uh, an operating environment which is conducive to getting returns uh, that, that their shareholders and their owners want. That having been said, as, as one of your speakers, in fact, Lord Ranger has just indicated, and I indicated earlier, the economy is turning. And whether it's turning you know, as fast as we would all like or not is a, is a question. But nonetheless, yeah. it is moving in the right direction. 